of our graphics. They're very expensive to make, so we just like to update them with a Sharpie. I love that. Uh, and, and that's just one way to remember that the 2010 midterm elections are right around the corner. Just 357 days until Election Day. Yes. Uh, another way to remember that the 2010 elections are coming right up is to watch the steel cage death match going on inside the Republican Party in advance of those elections. And that's where the ugliness from last week's conservative face plant in New York's 23rd Congressional District is spreading like some wicked political kudzu. In New York 23, the GOP picked a moderate Republican to run. The local Republican Party picked a moderate Republican. But national conservatives attacked that decision. And national groups like the Club for Growth and Conservative Conservative celebrities like Sarah Palin, who's from Alaska, went on the offensive. After weeks of attack, the moderate, locally backed Republican candidate withdrew. But the division had taken its toll, and for the first time since 1872, a Democrat won in New York's 23rd district. Fresh off of that stellar work, the Club for Growth has now endorsed conservative Marco Rubio in the Florida Senate race. Mr. Rubio is running against Governor Charlie Crist, who is well-liked by home state Republicans, but not apparently by national conservatives. Sound familiar? If the conservative challenger to Mr. Crist, Mr. Rubio, loses in the Republican primary, he may now have another option, running with the Tea Partiers, because the Tea Party is now an official political party registered in Florida. Brawling Republicans can be found elsewhere, too. In New Hampshire, where the race is already on to replace longtime Senator Judd Gregg, he and other national Republicans recruited former State Attorney General Kelly Ayotte for the job. But she's being challenged now by a conservative activist named Ovid Lamartine, and deep divisions in the Republican Party are once more being exposed. Small animals and Democrats would be well advised to stand clear while the Republican Party continues to knock itself out. Joining us now is Anna Marie Cox, national correspondent and host of Inside Story for Air America Radio. Anna Marie, thanks for joining us. It's good to be back, Rachel. Um, it doesn't seem like the Republicans' fiasco in that New York congressional race <laughs> has done anything to dissuade conservatives from trying that battle plan other places. Why do you think that is? Well, it, it, it depends on who you talk to. Um, I do talk to, I've talked to several people today, actually, um, Republicans, who know the lesson from, from, Republican, from the Republican loss in, uh, in uh, New York, or sorry, the conservative loss in yes. New York 23, is not perhaps to have a national party come in or have national figures come in and choose your candidate. Um, however, they do see that the energy is with the conservatives, um, but it's always best to have that energy be local. That's, what I think, the lesson that they're trying to learn. I, of course, am encouraging you know, the National Party to try and do, to replicate their success <laughs> in uh, New York 23. I hope they do that. Um, I know that, hey, Sarah, if you want to call Mark Rubio, go for it. <laughs> well, in Florida... I know they're waiting by the phone. I mean, and Char <laughs> Charlie Chris has been a, a popular governor. He's still technically favored to win the Senate seat, but... They think, I think because they've got more time than they did in the, in the Hoffman race in part, they really feel like Rubio is the guy they're going to get behind. Are they aware that that could cost them that seat? Not only are they aware of it, I think that the Rubio people are aware of it. Um, the mm -hmm. Rubio campaign has some people from the McCain campaign on it. I'm not sure if they're excited to have a Sarah Palin endorsement over there. Um, I'm not sure if they're excited to have a national people come in. I think right now what, what they're saying to me, and this is people on both sides, is that the Chris race is an outsider versus insider race. Um, that's what's really dragging on Chris right now, is that to the extent he, he has been very popular up until now, he's had a real slide, he's taken a real beating up in the press over some of his statements, including flip-flopping on the stimulus. Um, and I think that if they can paint him as an establishment figure, if paint Christ as an establishment figure, as the Washington figure, that's where Rubio comes in. He comes in as a non-establishment figure. Um, what you have a problem in and where that message gets muddied is when you have national figures like Sarah Palin, like Dick Armey, like uh, Tim Pawlenty come in and, and choose the choose the Rubio-style candidate. I don't think that's what they want in that race. The Republicans, I mean. The Republicans who are backing Rubio do not want that kind of help from the National Party. Help. 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 Um, well, <laughs> well, locally in Florida, the Tea Parties are Tea Party is now an official political party, and I realize that pretty much every family in Florida gets to have its own official political party. There are there are a lot of minor parties there, but does that signify something about local initiatives like this being there to stay? Perhaps I don't know. Although I do, I'm curious. Is it the Tea Party party or is it the Tea Party? Tea I'm, Party, I, 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 like when people say party, the HIV tea. virus. Or yeah, jazz music. exactly. Right. I'm sorry about that. Um, I, I can tell you that the Rubio people, I had no idea that the party existed until I called them about it today. So I don't see it as a real like possibility for him in the future. Um, but I say the more parties, the better. Um, I also want to encourage you to, to, use, to, to, to quit using the word teabag, um, Rachel. I think that we just need to make a stand on that. It's, it's crude. <laughs> 
um, it, it is rude. It's it's not. It, it does not do any favors to anyone. I think now we need to follow the the lead of the Urban Dictionary um, because you know scosafava is actually Italian for teabagging. Oh, that's very good. I'm sure Italy will be very happy to hear that. So well, Didi Scosafava, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> um, let me ask you about something on a different subject, Anne Marie. Within the last hour, uh, Senator Claire McCaskill, who I pointed out at the top of the show, did, said she didn't think that the Pitt Stupak anti-abortion amendment was that big a deal, that it wasn't enough to kill the whole bill. She has since tweeted. Oppose Stupak. Don't think we should change current law, which is no public money for abortions, but amendment goes too far, limiting private funds too. Any insight into this? Well, I think it's actually pretty significant. Um, Senator McCaskill very sort of jealously gar guards her blue dog status um, and, and really um, takes her cue from her constituents and uh, when she takes a stand on social issues. She has gone to the left of them before, um, in fact, in endorsing Obama right away. She's gone to the left of her constituents. But she, she really makes those choices carefully. And I think her coming out against the Stupak Amendment and saying that she's going to fight any version of it in the Senate shows how badly conservative Democrats in the House miscalculated um, what this amendment did. I think it shows how radical the Stupak Amendment is. Mm. Radical in the sense that it goes so much farther than the current law. It really is an imposition of government into people's lives that I would hope that libertarians and conservative Democrats could recognize as, as a real tragedy. I think it also shows that when she initially did say, I mean, we had her on tape, saying this is really no big deal, it's not enough to kill the bill, uh, she may have uh, been underestimating the level of opposition to this. Uh, I think we'll that see. that's true. Maybe I think the more people find out about this bill and the more women find out about this bill, the more people who care about women find out about this yeah. amendment, I think the more opposition it will gain. Maybe she'll come on the show and let me interview her about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Anna Marie Cox, national correspondent and host of Inside Story for Air America Radio. It's great to see you. Thanks for coming back. Thank you.